Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and um, it's a kind of a nasty, rainy day out today, so I decided to uh, do a little work on the uh, the Morris Minor project. So uh, after the last video, uh, got some comments, a bunch of guys, purists, uh, I assume from Europe, that were all pissed off that uh, you know how dare I cut a car in half and and why wouldn't you leave it the way it was originally? Well, I don't know if anyone got the memo, but it would look to me like all my other videos would indicate that I'm more of a hot rodder and this is more my passion to, uh, you know, to customize a car. So anyway, um, with that said, I've been doing a lot of thinking on this chassis and um, still not quite sure how we're gonna go. It's like 14 grand for a fat man frame. Um, so that's sort of the way I'd like to go. It comes with the front suspension and rear coilovers and a four nine inch um, axle. But uh, anyway, today I'm gonna get this uh, seat out of here. There's a little roll bar in here and I'm gonna pull this, uh, this Chevy uh, 305 that's currently sitting in here uh, as a mock-up out and the, uh, and the transmission. And then we can start looking at this front, at, uh, front end and um, do some measurements, see what we need uh, to replace this. Um, the Fat Man chassis, of course, is is meant for a stock uh, width Morris Minor. This one being four inches wider than stock, I don't think it necessarily makes too much difference. Might need to run a wider rim or a uh, uh, a deeper inset rim, um, which probably wouldn't hurt. This car is really small and. Uh, Maybe the more tread we could get onto the road with a V8 in it, the better. So, um, so anyway, yeah, we're just gonna fiddle around in the shop and start pulling things apart. I'm gonna use the big red crane and uh, yard the motor out of here. Yeah, that's about it. So yeah, this, um, uh, I think I told you before in the last video that uh, I had sold this Morris Miner a couple of times and uh, and got it back. And the last time, you know, and every time you have seller's remorse if you sell something off, but uh, the last time I sold it, it sort of went away and I didn't hear anything about it again. I, I didn't keep track of the guy that uh, I sold it to and, and uh, it seemed like the car was kind of gone for good. And it just so happened that a friend of mine, a uh, guy I know from the car world there, uh, Jerry, he um, he was doing a job at a, at a guy's place uh, and saw the car under a tarp. And uh, I'm assuming he went over and checked under the tarp and saw it had a V8 and, and basically contacted me and said, hey, I think I found your, your uh, car. So I so, thought, oh wow, that's cool. So uh, I actually went out to the address, peeked under the tarp, sure enough, my car, I could tell by the wheels. And uh, uh, the guy that owned the car at this point wasn't home. So uh, I, uh, I left a note on his door and it was about a 45 minute drive home. And before I got home, he had phoned me uh, and said he just got in, read the note, and was uh, he had actually found the car at a uh, an auto wreckers uh, in a lean to that had collapsed in the snow, and um, and that you know he just thought that it was a really cool car, and uh, he just didn't want to see it get crushed, so uh, he salvaged it and really had no connection to it, so he was happy to uh, you know to give it up, so. Um, Anyway, uh, we did a deal and, and uh, I went and bought the car. And he had put this uh, small block Chevy in it. I mean, I had had a small block Chevy in it before, um, but he had put this in there with this uh, turbo 350 transmission. Um, so I don't really know, it's a 305. Um, there's probably some good parts on it. It's got a aluminum intake on it. It's a uh, Elbrock intake on it, it's got an ATI distributor, so you know there's some parts there, heads or nothing. Um, so whatever, we'll pull this out and it can be used as a dummy block for other projects. Um, and, and maybe I'll take this transmission in and see if it's any good because uh, we could always use that on another project as well. Um, but anyway, we'll get old Big Red out here and, uh, and yard this motor and tranny out. 
Instead of you just sitting there waiting, I will. Uh, I'll bring you in closer. And we'll we'll pull this out of here. So I just have these uh, these little uh, sort of L brackets here that I bolt into the exhaust um, exhaust bolt holes, and then I'll run a chain over the top, and we'll use old big red here to get it out and you know over the years you do this so many times that you kind of got the tools and you got it figured so I just I have like a little bin with all these little brackets and whatnot that I need to, uh, to pull a motor out and uh, actually surprisingly enough I should go buy one of those carb plates Jay has a carb uh, carb uh, plate for pulling motors and I could just go over to his shop and grab it, but this is easy enough, I guess. Um, you know, one thing, like, I just, I'm self-taught. Uh, that's one thing I like to tell everybody that, uh, like, you don't have to go to school for this stuff. I mean, sure, I guess it helps, but um, by no means am I a professional, and I don't claim to be, but you know what, I've just, taught myself how to do this. I had 33 cars before I was 19 years old. My parents were very understanding, allowed me to like, we had a, a 400 square foot garage and uh, I would just bring these cars home. I'd buy them on, uh, in the newspaper, there was a little section for cars that were $500 and cheaper. It was called budget beaters. And I would just uh, buy a car, bring it home. I had a couple of friends whose dads were mechanics, professional mechanics. And uh, they were probably annoyed to shit, but they were kind enough that I would phone them up and say, hey, I just bought this car and it's making such and such a sound or doing this or doing that. And again, a lot of these cars had problems because they were only 500 bucks. And they would be kind enough to, um, to sort of help me through it. And uh, you know, say, hey, try this or try that. And in a lot of cases, we'd get these cars running again. And then we'd do a bunch of burnouts and, and uh, basically blow them up. But, you know, it was fun, right? Like, it was, it was, uh, it was a good time. And uh, I learned. Like, I literally self-taught myself. Self-taught myself, yeah. Not too swift. Anyways, I, I literally learned how to do this work on my own. And... And, you know, it took me a long time getting into the customization part of it. I, uh, I guess you could say I was scared to, to take that jump because I didn't know what to do. And I remember I, the first time I really did something exciting, I guess you could say, and I was very proud of myself to do it, was um, Jamie and I were uh, renting a house he was in the basement suite and Sarah and I were upstairs and um, he had his 70 Camaro uh, parked in a, like a lean-to uh, car shed thing. And I had a, uh, I had a 1989 S10 chassis in the garage. And we'd uh, taken 15 inches out of the chassis and I was gonna put a 49 Ford 
uh, 48 Ford uh, cab and uh, box on it. And so I had a 53 Ford box and I needed to, to get it to, to get it on there. And Jamie wasn't home to help me lift it. And his car and tent were in the way. So I literally just went out the back and cut it in half. I just cut her in half. I cut it in half and I took six inches. Uh, so I narrowed it five and eight inches and shortened it six inches. Tacked it all back together and did it all by myself in an afternoon. And that's when I realized, I came to the realization that there is no rules in this game. Uh, I mean, obviously suspension and stuff like that, you know, there's some, some, some things that you have to get right and in order to get it safety inspected. But generally, there's just no rules. And as long as you don't care what other people think, then you're good to go. And so, um, but it, it took a long time. Like that was way, 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 way into my playing around with cars that I, that I really saw the light and realized, wow, you know, you can sort of do what you like and uh, the heck with what people think about it. So, you know, again, I don't claim to know what I'm doing in any of these things. And most of this is trial and error. Um, but hey, if you don't try, you don't learn. And so uh, I urge anyone, especially if there's younger people watching, just do it. Go out there and do it. Hack the car apart, you know, change it up, cut it in half, widen it, do whatever you want to do. So anyway, a bit of a rant, but it's sort of good to know. Okay, well, we've got this all buttoned up. Let's see if we can. Now, uh, you'll see here that this is pushing into this valve cover. That's pushing into the valve cover on that side. I don't care, this, these are stock valve covers, it's not an issue. Again, if you were doing this, um, if you are trying to save it, then, you know, you do it. Yeah, so as I say, I don't know where this guy got this tranny. He, he said he didn't know anything about it. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it's usable. I'm gonna need a wrench. I'm going to need a wrench.
Yeah, the weather is absolutely atrocious outside. It started raining, so I was like, well, maybe we'll just take a day off and do a little bit of work on the car. I've been thinking about this thing ever since I did that video. I've been just running ideas through my head and doing a lot of research online about what to do. Um, this is a small tube frame. I know it's tubed, so it's, it's, it is strong, but, and you know, you think, well, maybe we can use what we have here and save a bit of money. But at the same time, I, uh, I don't know, I'm thinking that fat man frame, I know it's a lot of money, but get everything brand new and it's what you need you have lots of room because it is designed for something that's four inches smaller so I'd have two inches on each side that it would allow me to run a fatter tire on the back a uh, bigger tire on the front wider a little bit um, so it does have its benefits I guess and it's all brand new huh. That's fun. Oh, come on. You know, these shows online where they have all this stuff pre done, right? So, yeah, these were like a fabricated motor mount to uh, basically go onto this chassis and hold that, that small block. So, but as I say, I've got a small block forward over there that I think will serve a better purpose. We won't have the distributor bashed into the dash, it can be up front, just a lot of easy, easy stuff here. So, now, what you're seeing is the motor starting to tilt up and out, but now, I need to get that transmission up and out. So I'm going to do a little ingenuity here and uh, I'll just get something set up and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so what I've done here is I've hooked a strap to the tail shaft of the transmission and I've run that strap up to the hook here. And so now the idea is that I crank this and we are actually going to lift up the tail shaft of the transmission. And that is going to pull this engine forward and just keep the tail shaft up. This should work if my engineering is correct. But anyways, yeah, so that's the gist of it. Another one of those little tricks you learn after doing all this crap forever. Okay, so we'll continue to get this heap out. Transmission lifted right up like that. 
Perfect. So now, the easiest thing to do is actually push the car out of the way. Now three. There we go. The motor is free of the car, and the car is much easier and lighter to move around. So I will take these motor mounts off, get them out of the road, and <laughs> I might have to run over to Jay's shop because he's got a motor uh one of these wooden doohickeys you can drop the motor into pretty easy to build yourself uh, i don't know if he's using it or not but see you're getting all sorts of good parts so these are some universal chevrolet pieces that we could use on a different project uh, so I, that's the other thing i always say is keep all your parts my god i got parts 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 but and people say I'm a hoarder, but shit. Nothing worse than doing a project. It's one in the morning, you're soused in beer, and you don't have the part you need because the part store isn't open. Well, if you have it on the shelf, the project continues on. Next thing you know, it's three in the morning and you're still not finished. <laughs> And then, uh, and then we'll have a look inside here at what we need to do. I'm going to take some measurements, take some frame measurements. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and look at what Fat Man offers. Try to convince my wife it's a great idea. we got to look at this rear end. It's a 12-bolt rear end. It's very narrow. I have a Ford 8.8 .8 over here. Currently, it's only uh, currently it's only a uh, four bolt, but that's not a big deal because we would have to narrow it anyway. It's too wide. This is fifty six inches, roughly, and uh, came out of a eighty nine Mustang, four ten posi in here. But uh, we uh, I want to change this to five bolt, um, and I also have a. This is a Ford 9-inch housing, um, which it's off-center. But again, a guy's got to cut it, right? So I could, I could cut it to make it fit. Because um, currently, in the back of this guy, we have this. And I want to say it's 41 inches, roughly from the back of the brakes to the back of the brakes. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, like we want to change this all up. It's just not right. So I, I just keep leaning towards that fat man frame. It just would make life so easy. Basically, you just kind of bolt the body on it and we'd be a whole lot of steps ahead of ourselves. I mean, here's the deal. I'm not by any stretch a good welder. <laughs> like... So, irregardless if I want to keep this frame and alter it or not, I have to pay someone to weld it up. I mean, I have friends that can do it, but, you know, they're busy. They got life. They don't, you know, the last thing they want to do is come over here and do something for free. So, you got to pay a guy, right? So, you know, we start thinking about this. And then, okay, irregardless, we got to change this front axle out or this front, this front uh, cross member because it's just not right. And so, you know, now we're looking at a cross member. Well, a cross member to buy one. Uh, Welder series, I think, sells one. And you got to buy all the uh, independent front suspension. I think it's $3,000. So now you got $3,000. You've got to 
change some stuff in here. You're paying for a guy to weld it. And then it's still really not what you want. So uh, then you've got your transmission mounts all wonky here. They've kind of put in a, a brace for the body. like, And then the rear axle system, the rear suspension is definitely not what I want. So I want like a coilover situation. Um, I would like to run outer beams off the chassis just to, you know, like come out and down just so we have some, you know, side impact. Uh, you know, chances are with a V8 in this thing, I'm probably going to roll it or something stupid. So anyway, um, you know, then you start thinking like, shit, maybe I just, I left 14 grand isn't the end of the world when you get everything you kind of want and it's all set up for this car. So it's set up for the wheelbase. It's, it's got all the, everything you need. It's got a, you know, Mustang two independent front suspension. It's, it's all there. So, you know, in the steering, like the, like, you know, this is all set up funky. The chassis comes with all that stuff. So maybe it's the way to go. I keep telling myself that. I think I pretty much got myself convinced and then we have another little chassis we can make it some sort of go-kart or something out of this thing or put some other body on it i don't know anyway there you have it project morris minor we're actually doing something i feel really good about this because it's been a long time and uh i should have done this a long time ago so Okay, guys, we're here in the uh, <clears throat> in the office, the the brain where everything happens here. But uh, as you can see, I'm at uh, fatmanfab.com, and they have the uh, 1948 to 71 Morris Minor chassis, or actually, it's a 48 to 53 Morris Minor chassis, and uh, so it's a 48 inch track, two two style independent front suspension, plated tubular steel arms, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's $11,700 US, which roughly equates to 14,000 and change Canadian. Um, probably got some shipping and stuff. They're out in North Carolina, but um, they, uh, let me just, let me just go back here. This is the, that's sort of what it looks like. It says Anglia shown, but I assume it's about the same uh, for the Anglia. But uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking that's the route to go, man. It would just make life so much easier. Uh, a lot of guys are doing it. You know, there's all sorts of uh, Pro Street Morris Minor chassis. So, you know, it's there. And as I say, if I was <clears throat> had really good welding skills, and all the tools needed. This guy's liking life. Look at him how happy he is. Um, then, you know, away we go. But I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't proclaim to be a great welder. So, um, so anyway, that's it for this episode. And uh, we'll just uh, keep on building on this thing. And I'll figure out how to make 14 grand to uh, get this bloody chassis sent up to us. I might call Fat Man Fab and um, and just see what uh, what they say, and uh, that'll get me really in deep. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks a lot for all your support and whatnot, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.